about for a little after. Into the eighth day of September and we're off again.
sort of condensed course in nursing, a four-year course, but they've compressed it into two years. And so she's going to school continuously. Her lectures are about four hours in length. And so she's got a very grueling day ahead, but this is, this is typical. You'll actually, actually find conferences online, uh, and the average lecture is about three, four hours. I mean, I go into the, the, you know, these, these uh, so-called UFOs, you find the most of the UFOs stuff. projects so something going on and I have a fun product this sort of thing in a long time and in hours in between I'll bring other I'll bring other uh, magazines and things stuff like that just to sort of you know pass the time because there's you know at the end what, what I'm gonna there's nothing to do. So this, these things are complicated. These are, you know, uh, have a challenge. You're up to the challenge, and this is pretty much what it is. That's why I said before, you take a look at Davos. Now, what's Davos? What's, what are these so-called war gaming things, these think tanks? Well, they're all LARPs. They're all live-action role-play. They're all games. And the thing is, they're viewed as games. I forgot to put my turn signal on. So once you understand live action role play is LARP, this is what Q was essentially. You know, LARP, most people don't understand what Q was or anything like that because they don't understand what a LARP was. If you don't understand what a LARP was, or a LARP is, what a LARP is, then you're not going to understand Q. And of course, most of the media does it. And so they're able to make an issue out of something that wasn't really an issue. Q was never one person. Q was based on... Q was based on... James Bond, his GCHQ. That's the LARP. And that's the LARP, LARP that I play now. I've brought it out onto Instagram and to other areas. And it's about uh, playing James Bond.
and this is how you know you're dealing with a you're dealing with a, uh, a conspiracy theory. A conspiracy theory is a conspiracy theory, typically. And it doesn't matter whether they're vaxxers or anti-vaxxers. They see the surface, they see the iceberg, and don't understand that the iceberg is simply the tip. Is simply the tip. They're only seeing like ten percent of what's actually there. Most of the iceberg, if anyone knows about iceberg, uh, the visible portion is like ten percent. The rest is under, is under, it is not visible, it is not seen at all. And this is the way a, a conspiracy theorist works, this is the way most of the media works. And if you look at, you do a study on Edward Bernays, you'll understand that there was no mocking for the media in terms of a sort of a taking over of the media of the CIA. Uh, what was going on and what is going on is that the CIA is always been part of the media. The media and the CIA, the intelligence, are always together. Just about uh, 22 hours, 32 minutes into the day of uh, September 18th, 2021. So we're heading off again, and uh, we'll still be talking about Gnosis and uh, Gnostic and so forth, and how they're kind of embedded in the world we don't that we don't really see. But yet they have a significant impact, impact into uh, our daily lives. Become significant to us, and we have no idea why. And this is where people. And again, I'm using Lionel as an example for a lot of different people, a lot of different intellectuals. Lionel, I use Lionel simply because he's not a parrot. That was my, my choice for Lionel. There were other uh, pundits uh, on the Democratic left that uh, I chose to use. So we got Parnell, and there's another one. She wasn't Republican, but she was indeed black. Uh, her name was Kiki Green. But they all chose to go private. So they were, it was a private thing. So there's no, um, well, say, Vet, Vet Carnell didn't go private. She just simply left. She was knocked around during the election, and then that was the end. She's been on the hiatus ever since. So, if she comes back again, maybe I'll you know, look, take a second look. But I don't see how she's going to come back. Because her thing was, uh, and she thought she was going to get this, and she thought that she was going to get the, uh, uh, reparations for those who were slaves. But what she fails to understand, and this is what was repeated over and over again, but she seems to sort of not really understand what was going on. Slavery wasn't restricted simply to the black people. There was Chinese were used as slaves. Uh, there were a number of people and groups were used as slaves. Uh, my uncles. My uncles were sharecroppers. Uh, to understand uh, how the United States behaved and the same thing in Europe and in Europe uh, with uh, the farmers. And the massive plantations, all you have to do is look at into uh, uh, the school of 
America. And you also find that the, the, the so-called Europeans who are somewhat enlightened, they go, oh, these people really know what's going on. Well, no, they don't, because they're equally in, involved in uh, a large chunk of this whole share crop business. And this is the whole fair, the fair trade thing did not create a level playing field for farmers in South America. What it did is it turned them into slaves. Because what happens is that they gave them the land, but, well, they, because, but because they couldn't outright afford the land, they were lent the money by a particular organization or government, but had to pay the money back. So that, in other words, it acted as a fun, fundamentally as a lease. So they leased the land at a rate that they could never afford to pay off. Then when they went to do their, their farming, they had to buy equipment, they had to buy the seeds, they had to buy uh, a number of different things in order to uh, bring the crop forward. And then they don't, they don't get they don't get paid directly from the customer. They don't, you know, there isn't an end point for them to sell into, nor is there a market for them to sell into. They have to sell to a particular board. And this occurs this occurs in Canada. You, you know, a, a, a milk producer of a dairy farm not sell direct to the public. They have to uh, sell to uh, a dairy board, and the dairy board uh, tells them what they can and cannot do in terms of. Oh, it's raining again. I'm gonna get wet. So in terms of what they can and can what they can and can't sell, and they have to abide by a quota. If they go over the quota, they produce more not more milk than they uh, are allowed to to sell. Well, they have to dump the milk. And it doesn't matter that people are starving to death. It doesn't matter if people are going hungry. You know, they just say, well, oh, we gotta help the poor at the food at the food bank. Now. Um, Tell a uh, uh, premier board. Well, it's not premier board. It's, 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 it's a federal issue because it has to do with the it has to do with the dairy board. And unless you get rid of the dairy board and allow the farmers to sell independently, I mean, that was, that's the whole thing with fair trade. Fair trade isn't fair trade. It's simply another dairy board. It's another type. It's the you know, people. It had a bad name. The dairy board had a name. Banana board had a had a bad name. So instead of calling it this is really for coffee as well. It's another government agency. It's another level of bureaucracy calling itself fair trade. This is what organic stuff is. It's all anything that's certified or organic. The government has to have its share, and so it steps in and creates a board and a board network that, that, that certifies organic. And if you want to sell organic, well, you put that label on there. Well, you now have to go through this here, and what you have to do is you have to pay your dues. As long as you give them X amount of money, they'll still rubber snap your farm and you'll be able to do whatever you want to do. There aren't going to be any issues in terms of... not being certified as long as you pay your money. And that's the way things work. And is it... And they, 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 most of it's about money, most of it's corruption, a large chunk of it is the mayors and the lower level people, these people you give authority to, they're the ones who do it. So what happens when you go back to the leader and say, oh, we did X, Y, and Z, they say, no, we did It was this guy down here. But it's well known that when you give people power, this was, this was the study done at Stanford University, and ironically enough, that the doctor knows this. They name the fact that causes people to behave horribly to others uh, when they are in a position of authority. They call it the Lucifer effect. <laughs> so you can use your imagination to justify this possible that the Lucifer is indeed one of these sort of knocking points. He's one of the knocking people or God. And people do worship him, just like they do worship Baphomet, Paul. Uh, and a number of other different gods, Isis, uh, people are now looking at Set, they walk into uh, the Sumerian god, like the Anunnaki. Uh, I mean, the, the, the level that you see in terms of Gnosticism and Gnostics is all over the place. This is why you really can't define, uh, come down to a single definition as to what a Gnostic or Gnosticism, Gnosticism actually is. And this is sort of, but this is true of uh, almost any sort of ism, like Roman Catholicism, is 
Islam, any of these things that we call religion, all have varieties of different points depending on how people look at things. And as it, these are interpretations of things. This is the same thing that is true of communism. You have interpretation. And because, ironically enough, because of Locke, the atheists who put forward humanism, communism, socialism, and nationalism are now ba stuck back in the uh, point that they are they're no longer uh, <laughs> a science, but rather now they're a religion. So now there's an entire religion of science uh, and a religion of humanism <clears throat> that is dependent on somebody's asser assertion that this is indeed true. Well, wow, look at Stephen Hawking. He says it's true. What did he say is true? And he said, his said it, his statement was, uh, the universe was, was primarily an illusion, a hologram, not real. Most of your Gnostics and your postmodernists already do this. This is a large chunk of the whole, the whole issue of illusion. This is what the uh, gurus of India were talking about. So it's well within, it's well within the understanding of most of the Islam except that the world is an illusion. It doesn't want really nothing really matters. You don't talk about morality because nothing really matters. Everything boils down to positive and negative energies. So with that, with that sort of perspective, uh, There really isn't anything to stop anybody from doing whatever they want to do. And unfortunately, what it has done at this time uh, for the courts, and this is why you don't have people on the right part fighting for this, because they're trapped in this as well. This is the matrix they're trapped in. They're not outside the matrix. And so what happens is the court system is now completely nullified. Because if there's no right, there's no wrong, there's no need for the court system. And if everything's an illusion, so is the court. And if science says this, because this is the base of humanism, the base of secularism, the secular courts, then they, these courts no longer exist. They basically reason themselves, reason themselves out of existence.